Hey guys, I am Tim Langston with Red Dog Bushcraft, and as we continue talking about uh, our bicycles and how we can use those for bug out, touring, camping, overnight trips on the bike just going out and enjoying ourselves and increasing our ability to enjoy the outdoors. As you're selecting your bicycles, the ability to carry your gear is going to be an important consideration. So I thought while I was out here and we were talking about the different types of bikes and the advantages and disadvantages of those, we needed to go ahead and put in this initial set of videos a discussion about the different ways of carrying our gear. Now, for those of us who practice bushcraft and survival and we're looking at the bug out situations and all that, we make up bug out bags and we have our camping bags and our hiking bags and that type of stuff. And this is something that's pretty reminiscent or will be familiar to us. And this is a backpack. And this backpack probably weighs 20 pounds, and this is my everyday carry bag. But I have found that riding a bicycle with anything more than a lightweight hydration system bag gets pretty uncomfortable to me. Because of the position that I'm sitting in, if I'm riding much over... Well, I would do some trips back and forth to work. It's 20 miles from my house to work, and I could do that with a backpack loaded down with a change of clothes and enough food for 24 hours. But even that, it wasn't the most comfortable thing in the world, and it really was not my favorite way to carry gear. If you absolutely have to, you can use a backpack. But my experience is, other than a hydration system, I want to stay away from that. It just adds to that pressure, well, of your butt sitting on that seat. And the more weight and the more pressure you have at that contact point, the more discomfort there is. And if there's any place that you're going to find yourself being uncomfortable on a bike, it's going to be where you're sitting on it. Here on the back of my hybrid bike, we have a pretty standard trunk bag. And this bag simply mounts to the top of your rack that's on the back of the bike and it has a pretty decent size storage compartment has some pockets on the outside the top unzips here and it's a great place to throw a rain jacket or to just keep your gloves or maybe your wallet or something like that your identification stuff that you need to get to easily that you don't want to have to unzip the entire bag and it's expandable and it can come up so that you can put some bulky items in there and it's a great way to store, I would say, you wind up with an area maybe six inches wide by about six inches tall and about 12 to 14 inches long would be your standard trunk bag. And like I said, those tops can expand up a lot like a lot of our backpacks now that allow you to put some bulky items in there, but that's not the way you would normally want to keep that pack down. Now I find these bags mostly useful for items that I want to get to on a pretty routine basis without having to dig into a set of panniers or panniers. And when I'm talking about that equipment, I'm talking about things like my rain gear, my wallet, any tools or extra tires or uh, inner tubes, bike maintenance parts, that type of thing maybe some food, some energy bar, some extra water. That's what these trunk bags really come in handy for me. Things that I'm just going to use while I'm out tooling around. It's going to stay on the bike most all of the time. And it gives you a nice place to do some add-ons as far as some lighting. Maybe it's a place you want to store your headlight. You don't want to keep that on the front of the bike. Your cell phone, GPS units. All of that type of stuff can go into these trunk bags. And the trunk bags today can be bought with an array of straps so that if you leave the bike outside somewhere, let's say you put you a system in here for locking down your bike, you can lock your bike up, you can take your bag off, 
couple of pieces of Velcro and take that inside or keep it with you so you don't have to worry about those items disappearing while you're gone. The next level and something that you see a lot of people use when they're touring are panniers or panniers. And we've talked about in previous videos, some bikes allow you to put those on the front and rear. And these can get rather large. And there is a variety of sizes and shapes as well as waterproof and just water resistant. Now when I was going on some cross state trips, I spent a lot of money on some panniers that were waterproof and they have bags out there now that are truly waterproof bags they roll up and they work and they work well but whenever you get into a true waterproof bag you're losing some capabilities of like your zippered outside compartments and some netting on the outside and things that i find that come in pretty handy so what i have preferred I, what I have found that I prefer to use is just a standard pannier bag that might be made as a water resistant material and something you can treat with the same type of materials that you treat your tents or your rain gear with that will help that uh, repel that water. Uh, but I just go with a good heavy a ripstop nylon or a look for the same qualities that you would find in a good backpack a minimum of 500 denier and I would definitely recommend something that's pushing a thousand and these bags if you buy the right ones and you take care of them they will last a very long time and I think it's worth spending that money up front getting you a good set of bags and then to waterproof your gear, just use waterproof bags inside of them. They sell rain covers and, and that type of thing to go with these bags. But I found that putting everything inside of plastic bags inside not only helps organize, but that's really the most efficient way to keep your gear dry. Now the next option as far as transporting your gear is a trailer. And there's several different trailers out on the market and I tried a couple of them. The first one that I tried was one that you see people and you put a child in the back of it and you use that to carry them while you're riding your bike. They work out okay. They usually have two tires on the back of them so that's two more tires you have to worry about uh, doing the maintenance on. And then I found this particular trailer system and I'm going to bring a couple of the uh, pieces of that around here so pardon me while I turn my back on you here for just a second but if I can do this in one shot without repositioning the camera that would be a good thing now I just have a simple dog collar right here through the front because that's how I hang this up in my garage I have a hook on my wall and I run a dog collar through this front up here and that allow it gives me a strap that I can hang this up this is called a bob trailer and it's a single wheel trailer and it has a system that attaches to the front forks on the bicycle you have a axle that runs through the rear wheel that holds the rear wheel on and this trailer comes with a axle that replaces the axle on your bicycle and it's very easy you just screw the knob off on one side pull your old axle out, slide the new one in, screw the knob on, clamp it down, and it works just as efficiently, and there's no noticeability of change in the performance of the bike without the trailer whatsoever. It just it has a couple of knobs on each end that this groove right here slides over top of. So this goes over the axle, and then a pin goes through there and retains goes through there like that and that pin retains that on the axle and I'll actually show this set up on the bike but what this allows you to do is because there's only one wheel in the back you can actually carry a spare inner tube and even a tire that folds up with the trailer the advantages of the trailer over the panniers on the front and the back is just the sheer amount of weight that you can carry comfortably. The more weight that you have on the tires and the rim of the bike, the greater your chances of having 
something that that could affect that tire or that rim in a bad way the more weight that's on it the more susceptible it is to puncturing the tire uh, the squirrelier it makes it on rapid downhill descents uh, the uh, more chances you're having of compressing that tire and getting into a pinch uh, two type scenario and just more wear and tear on the back what this system does is it distributes the weight behind your bike and puts a lot of that weight on this extra tire in the back but because it's single wheel what that does is it allows that trailer to track right into the same wheel track as your bicycle i have found that you know other than the weight you really don't notice that this trailer is is behind you uh, you can go down hills, climb up hills. I've had it on both off-road and on-road uh, trips, and it's a great way to go. If panniers are not giving you the amount of room that you need, or if you want something that you can just take your bushcraft kit that you're already using and put it inside this waterproof bag and throw it on the back of a bike and take off, that's a great way to do it. And that's what I'm going to be trying here in some upcoming videos. We're going to utilize the trailer and just put my bushcraft kit on it. The panniers we're going to save for our bicycling gear, our rain gear, our change of clothes, that type of stuff. Anything that we need specifically for the bike. And when I would pull the trailer, a lot of times I would keep two pannier bags on the back. And they stayed empty. They weren't even used. The uh, the straps would be pulled down tight to give it as thin of a profile as I could to keep it out of my way. But the reason I kept those on the bike was if we were on our last town before we got to the campground or the campsite, wherever we were staying, I would stop at a local store and that's where I would buy my food for the night, anything that I needed for that evening, and then I would put that in the panniers and use that to travel up to the campground. Once I got to where I was camping, I would unhook the trailer from the bike, set that up at my tent or my shelter, and leave it there. And then let's say it was a right good little distance to go up to the bathhouse or the shower facility, or if I wanted to ride into town to have a meal or, or just tour around town a little bit, I would only take the bike with the panniers on the back of them, and that would allow me to carry all of the gear that I needed. So let me... Uh, let me actually hook this up and I'm just going to reposition the camera here and I'll show you how easy it is to set this trailer up and we'll go from there. So I'm going to move this out of the way and I'm going to set this right there where it's on each side of the tire and reposition this camera just a little bit. As a matter of fact, I'm going to back you out some so that you can see all of this. There we go, just like that. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the trailer and I'm going to set it over top of the axle. And I'll try to remember when I'm done here to actually zoom you in and show you that. But you just take the trailer, pull it to the, from the rear over top of these axles, and just set it down just like that. And then this pin goes in and secures that. And there's a little retainer right here that that goes behind. And that will keep that in place. All right. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. And that's it. We're set up. The bike is still on the kickstand. Everything is secured and locked in, and we don't have to worry about that going anywhere. Now the Bob trailer comes with this large waterproof bag, and this, you can just take your gear, take your bag, put it in there, roll that up, a couple of rolls, and then just like any other waterproof bag, just gets rolled up and snapped together 
I have a uh, pistol lock on here. That's just to lock the bag to the uh, frame itself. And then it comes with this funny looking bungee cord. But you don't have to have this, just regular bungee cords will work. But it basically spreads this apart so that you can compress your bag. And if you're off road and you're shaking and jerking around, you don't have to worry about that coming off. And then, Bob thinking of everything, put a little place on the back to where you can actually hang a flag on the back. And that doesn't seem like it would be that big of a deal, but it really is a nice thing because that actually increases your visibility when you're on the road. Now let's move up here and take a look at that rear axle. Sorry about the shakiness there, but I want to do this all in one take. So we're just going to zoom in here, let that focus in, and right there is that rear axle, axle connection. Now I'm going to take that back off. I'm not even going to take the bag off. All right, so we'll drop that pin, and then right here, that little knob right there, that's the safety. That's what holds that pin in place, keeps it from coming out. The pin slides out. That stays with the trailer. And then the trailer just simply lifts off. And here's that axle that I was talking about. See how far it sticks out? It provides that groove and that little, it spins on that axle and gives you a good place to um, to attach a good secure point so that is the Bob trailer system and it is by far the nicest trailer system that I've tried and if you want to carry a lot of gear with you if you're going to be doing some type of a bug out type vehicle or an extended stay camping type vehicle this really adds a lot of function to your bicycle just because of the amount of weight that you can carry. It really takes your weight, I won't say it makes it a non-issue, but it allows you to carry some heavier items that we in the bushcraft and the camping community may want to carry that a lot of the lightweight bicyclists may not even consider. Like we may want to take some heavier tools with us. We may want to carry an axe. We might not be looking at a lightweight sill line tent. We might be looking at some type of a canvas. It just allows you more versatility in the amount of gear, not only in volume, but also in weight that you can afford to carry at this point. Now, with that said, you don't want to go out and start carrying reams of firewood on this thing. I mean, you want to be practical with what you carry. There's give and take with all of this. But, if you're looking for a bike and a carrying system that you can use to get exercise, you're looking for something that you can use when you want to go camping, Maybe you're going on a hunt type scout, you know, you want to use this to ride down the fire road. I can tell you that on a bicycle, on some fire trails, you can get a lot closer to animals than you would ever think you could. A lot closer to them and not disturb them than you will on some type of an ATV. If you're looking for something that is small and compact enough that you can put in your pickup truck, you know, to me, the most practical bug out vehicle which there's a lot of controversy on bugging in and bugging out but when you live where I live bugging out is very real it's practical because I live near a nuclear power plant and if something happens to that plant we can't stay at our house we have to evacuate the area I live in a place that is prone to hurricanes so therefore being close to the water we have to leave my bug out vehicle of choice is a pickup truck. I'd like to have a camper shell on it. That would allow me to keep gear dry. 
I'd like to have a rack on top of it that I can carry my canoe with me. And if I had the versatility of being able to put the Bob trailer on the inside with my bushcraft kit, as well as my bicycle on a bike rack on the back of it, I think I would be in a real good position when I started to bug out. If you look at the newscast after a major storm has gone through, especially in the area that I'm talking about with hurricanes and flooding and that type of event, there's a couple of ways that you see people getting around and moving after those storms, either leaving the area or going back into the area. And it's on foot, on boat, and by bicycle. So if you had the option to do all of those to continue your move or your trek, whether you were going out or coming back, I think you would have your bases pretty well covered in practical uh, scenarios. So thanks for joining me once again. We'll start talking about some of the gear we carry, just how heavy do we want to get, just how lightweight do we want to go as we start getting into some more videos. I've got a couple of trips coming up later on this year where we're going to be doing some camping by bicycle. And as we do those types of events, I will film that as much as I can and bring you along with us. And we'll continue this discussion as we go through the year. But until then, I'm Tim Langston with Red Dog Bushcraft, home of global safety and survival. Until next time, God bless, guys.